गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर यस गुड मॉर्निंग सर यस गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू सो टुडे वी हैव अराउंड 16 स्टूडेंट्स ऑन बोर्ड या uh so let's begin uh so uh, as yesterday i told you that if you really want to go for a successful uh, metabolic engineering the thing what is required is that you should be aware of the metabolomics now what does the metabolomics means means it is the study of the uh, system as a whole okay and that is what i think i i have told you about the systems biology we'll talk about it afterwards but then uh first thing which is necessary that you should understand the system which you want to modify whether you are modifying to you are trying to modify the prokaryotic system okay so within that if it is e coli or any bacillus or any kind of microorganism or fungi if you are interested in or uh, uh you are if you are interested in an yeast cell or in, uh, you are interested in an human cell or an insect cell or an animal cell so the first thing what you should have the knowledge is that you should uh, have the understanding of that particular system that how does that system it works what are the things which goes inside what happens within that particular system what kind of compartmentalization is there what kind of mechanism is happening within them then what kind of products are formed within that particular system which products are again excreted outside or which are secreted outside okay both these things are different what i am trying to say excretion is different and secretion is different so uh, we should have an wholesome knowledge of that particular system and that is what we are trying to understand so we can call it as a cellular metabolism so there i told you or we started with that something which enters inside the cell okay and that uh, something which is entering means you are adding some carbon so carbon is very important here so carbon it could enter into the cell with uh, uh, as a nutrient it can be in any form okay so uh, in that also i told you that you supply the cell with some different type of the substrate but when it goes inside it is go going to follow a fixed path okay a fixed uh, mechanism is there which is involved and it is going to remain constant whatever is the input what cell okay so there we have seen that it may undergo the catabolic reactions so uh, through the catabolic reactions you may obtain the different carbon compounds you get the in a different energy form so either it could be the uh, atp energy atp in the form of energy it could be the nadh it could be the nadph etc etc so all these different carbon compounds and the energy together they can now be utilized for the biosynthetic process right and this is how it will complete the overall metabolism of that particular system so when you talk about metabolism there i told you that we consider both catabolism as well as the anabolism and both these systems uh, of the reactions catabolism or anabolism they are interconnected to each other okay and that is what an overall statement what we can uh, make here that uh, the exothermic catabolic reactions are coupled with the endothermic anabolic reactions whereby the system is working in right so uh, this is what we were talking about then i think we ended up with one of the topic that these uh, metabolic reactions they are uh, connected to each other chemically physically and with respect to the some characteristic time so chemically chemically when i'm saying that it is chemically interconnected to each other so we know that they follow a typical path okay and we have the specified metabolic pathways which are uh, happening into the system okay like glycolysis or tca path uh, you have your you have the pentose phosphate pathway you have an enzyme pathways okay so those particular fixed routes are uh, found okay so we can say that they are chemically connected to each other connected so although these pathways 
they may not occur in one of the compartment so the so few of the things are happening into one compartment remaining could be completed into the another compartment and again uh, in another compartment so this way if the overall metabolic reactions or the pathway it has to happen okay so some of the reactions will be converted uh, will be uh, happening into the cytoplasm and through cytoplasm it will be then transported to the another compartment okay where it will be completed and whatever the product which is obtained into that compartment again it will be transported to the first compartment right so this is how these pathways though they are occurring into the different compartment but they are physically connected to each other and that is what i think so we ended up okay and now we'll continue that how uh, these pathways they can be uh, connected to each other uh, to the time yeah i think this is what we ended up so is the screen visible yes, yes sir yeah just let me know if i am not there uh, uh, online we think so there are some problems with the net uh, internet because i got disconnected two three times fine uh, so this is what chemically which i told you then uh, uh, they are physically uh, connected to each other the different pathways though they are occurring into the different compartment like can is happening into the uh, nucleus or uh, the degradation of your food particle is happening into the lysosomes but still if, if these things has to work there has to be an interconnection between the different pathways and the different compartments then the dynamics of metabolic reactions are very important that how this uh, how much time these reactions are Firstly, we know that it is due to the presence of the enzymes as the catalyst. Our metabolic reaction they can occur very very fast. Okay, but still uh, there are different systems which are happening or different uh, mechanisms which are happening within the cell. And if you want to study those different mechanisms, okay, they should be comparable to each other. You cannot compare between a, a fast occurring reaction with a slow occurring reaction. okay so you'll have to select upon those mechanisms which have their characteristic uh, times which are comparable with each other with each other then only you can understand the system that how the system is uh, occurring here fine so you have to fix upon one of the mechanism and with compared to that particular mechanism whether the other systems are faster or slower or comparable based on that you can uh design your experiment so in this case if you uh, have some of the systems which are very slower as compared to that of the system in which you are interested so in that case you may ignore those particular slower reactions right because they are not going to make a, a drastic effect into your observations right so that is what is actually uh, considered here when you are going for the uh, metabolic engineering Right. So maybe with a graph, I will try to show you. Yeah, you can see here. Okay. So these are some of the characteristic time for uh, the different type of the mechanisms or the phenomenons which occur into the cell. Okay. Now this is, uh, I think, uh, what they have studied into the E. coli, that is the prokaryotic system. Fine. Uh, so what you see here, that for the cell growth. Okay. It means for uh, its growth or. Uh, whatever the activities which are required for that particular cell it requires a characteristic time which could be between 10 days to 3 to 10 days to 5 okay obviously this is in seconds okay so that you can now consider i will not speak it every time so you have this cell growth which require this particular characteristic time now within that cell growth whatever the reactions which are going on and we know that these reaction they are obviously regulated and one of the regulation is allosteric control so this allosteric control of the metabolic pathways it may be uh, in an characteristic time period of 10 days to minus 4 to 10 days to 2 although the range is very uh, large but the time required as compared to that of the cell, cell growth it is very low the same thing you can see about the mrna control that is the transcription process so it is in the range of around 10 days to 1 to 10 days to 3 
in the mass action that is the transport phenomenon which is occurring with, within the sale it is requiring a very very less amount of time so it could be uh, less than 10 raised to minus 4 that is what we see then the induction of the enzymes although it takes a larger time than that of the cell growth the mutational changes what you consider if we if if they are happening if the mutational changes are happening or if the evolution is going on and we know that this evolution process it is very very slow so it may take a longer time for the mutational changes to happen okay then only the things can work into it and uh, this uh, one if you if you are working with the uh, fermentation processes or uh, fermenters where it could be a, a, a fixed batch or it could be a continuous type of a fermentation what you are going so in that case also these characteristics they may differ so they may range in the relaxation time of around 10 to 10 raised to 6 uh, seconds okay so you have to compare so if i want to study the cell growth so obviously the mutational changes they are far away from it the allosteric control is far away from it but it can be a comparable between the cell growth and the mRNA control. So if you are studying only the allosteric control within the system, so they are also here also you can say that they are comparable with the mRNA control. Like this, you can think upon it or you can design your experiment. Right? So here there are few uh, terms which has been uh, defined. So like one of the thing is called as the frozen reactions. Okay, so this is what... Uh, you have to fix up on like what are these frozen reactions then so reactions with much larger relaxation times than that of the system of your interest means you are interested only in the cell growth so at that time the mutational changes they are taking a very large time so these two comparing these two reactions these reactions they are called as what the frozen reaction that is the mutational changes uh, it comes under a category that is called as a frozen reaction and maybe at this time you can ignore these particular frozen reactions also, right? because the uh, time which is required for happening that particular reaction is very, very large. Okay, And then that you cannot be able to estimate or analyze if you are going for the cell growth. Okay, So such type of reactions are called as what? The frozen reactions. You have an, another type of the reactions which can be called as the pseudo equilibrium reactions. So processes that have relaxation times much smaller than that of the system. So if you are again, if you are targeting the cell growth, so in that case, the allosteric control is uh, very, very low. So in this case, you can ignore these uh, reactions which are occurring at very smaller rate because they are not drastically going to affect your cell growth. Obviously, everything what I'm talking about, it is under the standard conditions standard growth conditions so it could be your temperature ph etc etc so under those uh, uh, those particular conditions you can think upon that which type of system you are working upon and according to that you can have the correlations between them, right so this is how you can correlate between the different type of the activities or the phenomenon which are occurring within the cell and compare between them and this is going to uh, give you an idea about the overall working of that particular uh, system okay or that particular cell okay so this information i got it from a paper uh, which was by stefano po uh, paulus okay so there is a research article onto it and uh, uh, he has uh, brought about this particular uh, characteristic of the metabolic pathways which we should take into consideration right so uh, if you understand these things then it will be easier for you to uh, work upon the system. Again, if I go back to the example which I was quoting, ki garat paune eta tyaves, the tumala pratyekacha schedule jar mahiti ase. Okay, uh, means with uh, with the different activity, the morning activity, the afternoon activities, the night activities, the high activities tumala pratyekacha mahiti asti. So tumi the compare karu shakta dekme kanchi. Ani mat tyaat tumala kuthe kasa change karta yena rahe the tumi tyaat thoro shak. Fine. So that was about the uh, basics about it. So here a statement which I have written that metabolic processes can be simplified significantly by ignoring the reactions and pathways 
operating on time scales outside the time range of your interest okay so that's why me sell growth to me is a fix scale like you know the sell growth or target correct so at that time allosteri kiwa to the bio biomass to the free uh, flux are said to mana kiwa mutation rate as to the yeah asha jaya goshti at get to the time frame made bus at night so those things you can ignore for that particular experiment okay and then you can proceed with your actual thing in which you are interested okay now uh, i i told you about the uh, uh, the physical interaction between uh, or the connection between the metabolic pathways and for that what do we require we require a very good transport system or the functioning of the cell is dependent upon this transport system because the nutrients which are available onto the outer side they have to be taken inside and it doesn't happen that anything can come inside or anything can go outside so they are highly highly specific so you uh, have a very well defined <coughs> transport system <coughs> within the cell so already uh, maybe uh, during the cell biology we have talked a lot about this uh, transport mechanism so we'll again revisit this with few additions which i have tried to uh, make here and monon me to syllabus adi cover up kela so that it will be easier for you to understand this thing so when you are talking about the transport processes he baka tumhala jar ata त्या सेल मध्ये काही चेंजेस करायचं असेल तर यू शुड बी अवेअर ऑफ दिस डिफरंट टाइप ऑफ दी ट्रान्सपोर्ट सिस्टीम ओके अँड इफ यू नो दिस ट्रान्सपोर्ट सिस्टीम देर यू कॅन को रिलेट दॅट विच टाइप ऑफ मटेरियल इज ट्रान्सपोर्टेड हाऊ मच इट इज ट्रान्सपोर्टेड हाऊ इट इज ट्रान्सपोर्टेड एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा सो फॉर दॅट यू शुड हॅव अन फेअर आयडिया अबाउट दी ट्रान्सपोर्ट मेकॅनिझम सो यू हॅव टू टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रान्सपोर्ट मेकॅनिझम वी कॉल इट एज अ डिफ्युजन ओके Uh, or it is also called as the passive uh, transport and you have the active transport now the difference is we know that uh, uh, the passive transport does not require energy and here it requires energy uh, so this uh, yeah the nutrient uptake by the cell it requires the transporters so this uh, uptake of the nutrients is highly specific so it will take up only those uh, molecules for which the transport uh, system is available uh so that is uh, one of the thing that is specificity then uh, this transport system basically it works uh, uh may maybe it could be uh, along the concentration gradient or it could be against the concentration gradient so it could be a both way of that is the concentration gradient is very important here and uh, this nutrient molecules they must pass through a selectively permeable membrane okay so uh, all the cells as we know they have an outermost covering which is called as a cell membrane or a plasma membrane which is highly highly uh, a selectable uh, permeable membrane okay means uh, we call it as an permeable why because it allow the transport of few of the uh, molecules which are uh, insoluble in nature or which are very very small they can be easily transported across the membrane while some of them which are larger which are uh, soluble uh, or uh, charged type of the species they cannot be easily transported so for that you require some or the other kind of help so for that uh, we should understand what is the plasma membrane so already we know plasma membrane it's a lipid bilayer so lipid bilayer it is rigid it is asymmetric in nature okay uh then it has many uh proteins which are associated with it it has many carbohydrates which are associated with it so all these uh, different components which are present it makes the lipid and asymmetric molecule okay and due to the presence of the uh, saturated and unsaturated type of the fatty acids uh, we can call it as a rigid type of an uh, structure means it's not completely flexible so uh, this uh, typical nature it helps the cell to acquire a specific shape a specific size okay or uh, uh, it is uh, that much flexible that uh, if the cell has to grow it can increase into the size uh, etc etc so those particular characteristics are due to the presence of the different type of the components into the uh, plasma membrane fine so I, i may not uh, go on reading all these things so there are proteins which we have seen 
so these proteins uh, as i told you it, it is basically a transport system but it could be enzymatic the the receptors what we have talked that these uh, proteins can be that they can act as an enzyme they can act as an receptor they can act as an uh, uh, signaling etc etc then you have the carbohydrates and this carbohydrate they give some characteristic feature uh, to the uh, membrane okay so uh, yeah the within the transport system uh, we have studied about the simple diffusion I means simple diffusion means what that this uh, uh, the, this re, uh, relies on the diffusion mechanism which does not require any energy it uh, operates down the concentration gradient means what that always there will be a transport of the material from higher concentration to the lower concentration right so it is neither fast it is not selective so all those components which are smaller in size which are insoluble in nature so they can be transported okay so th there is no problem of selectivity but it's a very slow process as compared to the other processes what we know so the molecules like water oxygen carbon dioxide which are gases or ammonia then fatty acids some alcohols these are insoluble type of the molecules so they can be easily transported along their uh concentration gradient so here uh, there are three steps uh, which we can imagine okay the first one is what that the transfer of the compound from the extracellular medium to the membrane phase okay so you are going from an soluble uh, phase to an insoluble phase then diffusion of the compound through the bilayer okay so consider that bilayer is a some space so if that compound will have to transverse that particular uh surface or the region of your bilayer and the third could be what transfer of the compound from the membrane phase to the cytosol okay so whenever you are talking about this passive or the simple diffusion you can consider or divide it at, at a uh, molecular level into these three steps that first the molecule is transferred from an uh, outer extracellular medium to the membrane phase and from uh, within the membrane phase there is a transport and from membrane phase to the cytosol this is how the transportation can be uh, imagined so uh, here the cytosol or the extracellular medium normally they have the same type of the physical chemical property the cytoplasm and the outer side so uh, uh, physical chemically they are similar so you can say that the step 1 and step 3 are quite similar with respect to the rate or the flux of the molecules whenever it is occurring in that particular state uh, uh, okay so here the concentration of the transported compound across the membrane it will depend upon what it will depend upon the concentration of that compound in the water phase and its partition coefficient now here one term which i have introduced that is called as a what is this transfer uh, partition coefficient so it relies or it relates to the solubility of your compound either in the more, what you can say uh, the aqueous phase which is outside or which is inside the uh, of it into the insoluble uh, environment of the membrane okay so if it is more soluble into the membrane you can say that it can be uh, the transport will be very fast but if it is less soluble into the membrane uh, environment that is insoluble it will take a very large amount of time to be transported fine right? so here simply remember this uh, one factor that is called as an partition coefficient which is going to decide whether the trans uh, the rate of the transport is going to be fast or it is going to be slow right so you can see here the partition coefficient it is what is the ratio of solubility of the compound in the lipid bilayer and the solubility of the compound in the water okay so this solubility is going to affect the transport process and this can be easily understood or it can be calculated by a fick's law which i already told you uh, although at that time i have not told you about this uh, equation but this equation will be give you the uh, rate of the transportation okay and this uh, rate of transportation it was given by fick's law by by fick's so it is called as an fick's law okay so uh, what are these different terms uh, simply Uh, so d mem and d mem uh, so capital d and small d so this uh, capital d it, it relates to the diffusion coefficient okay 
while uh, the small d it is relating to the thickness of the membrane then the ca and cc so this is in, uh, indicating the concentration of your compound in the uh, outside medium and into the membrane phase right then and the p what we uh, so everything this is a constant so we have converted into a uh, factor that is called as a p so p is what it is the permeability coefficient right so all the three constants are related as p so r tran that is the rate of transport is equal to the permeability coefficient and the concentration of your uh, molecule which is to be transported uh so uh, the transport processes now can be imagined so it depends upon what the nature of your compound so whether your compound is into the uh, dissociated form or the undissociated form right so uh, uh, i think two examples which i have quoted uh, so if your molecule organic molecule which is to be transported if it is into an uh, dissociated form the satyata if example acetic acid so if acetic acid is dissociated so it is going to form what associate uh, sorry acid uh, acetate ion now acetate ion it has a charge means what it is insoluble into the lipid membrane as it is insoluble into the membrane uh, lipid membrane so its transportation will be very very slow but if it is into the undissociated form the undissociated form is soluble into the membrane so that it can be now transported in that particular form right so it depends upon that in which form your molecule is present whether it is uh, a neutral type of a molecule or whether it is a charged type of one right so uh, this way they they have calculated the permeability coefficients for lactic acid and acetic acid uh, so they found it somewhere between 5 into 10 raised to 7 and in case of the lactic acid and 6.9 into 10 raised to minus 5 uh, with respect to the acetic acid right so here the transport of your molecule it is completely de dependent upon what the degree of dissociation of the organic molecules which has to be transported and this degree of dissociation is going to be decided by whom the ph of your cytosol as well as the extracellular material fine so the ph is very important so if you know the ph within the uh, compartment in which you, which you are studying or outside that particular compartment that is going to decide whether your molecule is going to be into the uh, dissociated form or the undissociated form and these forms are in turn going to decide whether it can be whether the transport is very fast or whether it is slow okay now within the diffusion you have an uh, another type that can be a facilitated diffusion that is there is some help which is being given for the transportation so you have the transmembrane proteins which are present within the membrane and these transmembrane proteins uh, they provide a, a way or a channel whereby the uh, dissociated form or the charge form or the larger molecule they can be transported across the membrane now obviously here also it is along the concentration gradient which does not require any energy so we have seen that there are some specific transporters uh, which uh, can open and close and through their opening and closing on the either side of the membrane the molecule can be easily transported fine so a few of the examples like uh, glut transporter we have seen then we have seen the bicarbonate uh, and chloride uh, system whereby the transportation can take place fine so again i may not read this so this protein they are called as what the permeases uh, so this facilitated diffusion uh, the transport occurs passively uses no energy and it operates down the concentration gradient and this facilitated diffusion is uh, basically used for the transportation of the extremely slow molecules I mean why they are slow because they are poorly soluble into the membrane and for them you require this help which we call it as a facilitated diffusion uh, so uh, in e coli and most of the bacteria the glycerol is transported by the facilitated diffusion It means most of the nutrients which are taken up inside the cell uh they are they they are through the facilitated diffusion 
so uh, this uh, facilitated diffusion it is more common in the eukaryotic microbes but it is rare in the uh, prokaryotes yeah this graph also uh, we have discussed so when you are talking about the simple diffusion it's a, a, a linear uh, mechanism of transportation where you can see that it is a continuous process which can happen uh, unless and until the concentration gradient is present okay but when you talk about the facilitated diffusion this transportation will also take place along the concentration gradient but then it may become saturable okay so it depends upon the uh, saturation ability of that particular permeases or the transporters so initially you may see that there was an increase into the transport system but as the concentration of uh, or the more and more transportation is taking place you may come across a plateau region where the saturation is there uh, for your permeases or your transporters and the transportation will stop at that particular so even though if there is a presence of concentration gradient fine so that is these are the two uh, pics uh, sorry these two graphs uh, which are the representative representation of the simple diffusion and the facilitated diffusion fine so uh, the saturation effect is very important here then uh, yeah so this facilitated diffusion um, it is highly specific uh, for the transport event so what are the factors which is going to decide this uh, uh, saturation or the transportation of the molecules uh, so it is the synthesis of the transport proteins is regulated by the cell okay so that is the uh, presence of these proteins uh, into the mem uh, membrane okay so again they are synthesized and they are present into the membrane that is one thing that uh, whether they are continuously synthesized and uh, kept into the membrane that is one it could be based on the nutrient required see if the cell does not require the nutrient why this transport will occur that is another thing right so whether the nutrient is required or not then only the facilitated diffusion will take. then whether the nutrient is present in the external environment if the nutrient is not present why these transporters will be present there or they will work that is also then the nutrient concentration so obviously the there has to be a concentration gradient that is a higher concentration outside as compared to that of the inside then only the facilitated diffusions can work so uh, the next uh, type of a transport which we have seen that is the active transport so here uh, the active transport could be similar to that of the uh, passive tran transport uh, if you look at the graph so here also you may see an increase into the transport mechanism but this may also come across the saturation period whereby the transport may not take place only the difference is what that here you may require an energy input then only the transportation is taking place and here the transportation is against the concentration gradient okay so here uh, against concentration gradient it involves carrier proteins it share the three characteristics of the facilitated diffusion that is the saturation kinetics jatta sangitla then it is substrate specific it is inhabitability it is a free energy consuming process etc etc so these are some of the characteristic point of the active transport now from where do you get this free energy so free energy obviously it could be obtained from the atp hydrolysis right so within this active transport we saw that there is a primary active transport and you have the secondary active transport right so in both these cases you may require the uh, free energy which could be obtained from the atp hydrolysis okay and the other form of energy what we have seen that there is a generation of electrochemical gradient which can be utilized for the transport mechanism so already uh, we have seen some examples uh, one of the best example could be a sodium potassium uh, transporter then you have uh, that is sodium potassium atps then you have the calcium atp is what we have discussed fine right? so these are few of the examples where you can say that uh, by the uh, expense of atp hydrolysis whatever the energy is produced that energy is utilized for the transportation of molecules from uh, lower concentration to the higher concentration so that is called as what and primary active transport okay uh, but in some cases you have the secondary active transport so in this case the gradient which is generated and during the primary active transport that gradient 
can be utilized for the transportation of your uh, molecule either inside the cell or outside the cell so that is called as what secondary active transport right now when you are talking about this primary and secondary active transport uh, we come across that there are some molecules uh, that, that uh, a given transporter can transport only one molecule or it can transport two molecules so if it is transporting two molecules it could be in either both of them they are transported in the same direction or they are transported into the opposite direction uniport you may have the symport you may have the uh, transport no not uh, it is called as what antiport type of transporters could be present here <coughs> Uh, so here, um, the active transport basically it is utilized by this prokaryotic system or the cells uh, for uh, taking up the nutrients. Okay, so uh, the rate could be very very high. It could be against the concentration gradient. So the nutrients are concentrated inside the cell, which could be thousandfold more as compared to that of the uh, outside. Okay, so here you can see the different uh, type of the transportations which I have shown. Now, within this uh, active transport, you have the ion coupled uh, transport system. So, there it could be due to the electrochemical gradient of the proton or the sodium which is generated. Okay. And then uh, there you can have a gradient which is generated by the ATP electrolysis. So, primary event is that membrane is first energized, and secondary event, event is that, that the energy is used to transport. So uh, this I told you that it can be either in any direction. So you have the uniport, then you have the symport and the antiport. Right? So uh, these are uh, common am among the uh, aerobic organisms, which can generate an ion motive force more easily than in an anaerobic organisms. Then this example also I told you about the ABC transporter. That is ATP binding cassette, uh, where I told you that uh, the antibiotic which is taken up by the cell can be easily uh, excreted outside by using this uh, ABC transport. Now, this additional thing which I wanted to uh, tell here, and that is called as a group translocation, which is very important or which have, which uh, which is a beneficial system for the prokaryotic uh, cells specifically. So you can see two uh, examples which are quoted. One is from E. coli and other is the B. subtilis. That is bacillus sub. So what is this group translocation? It is also called as phosphoenol pyruvate sugar phosphotransferase system. That is a PTS system. Okay. So it's a very, very good uh, mechanism uh, which is occurring into the cell. So what does it do? That this phosphotransferase system, it transports a solute while simult simultaneously phosphorylating it. Okay, means it will allow the uh, of the molecule okay inside the cell, and the moment it is being translocated inside the cell, it is phosphorylated, right? And it is common in bacteria, which is responsible for acquisition of number of sugars. Now, uh, if you want to bring something inside, obviously you'll require the energy, and this energy is provided by one of the energy system and that compound is what it is a phosphoenol pyruvate okay so the energy is provided by phosphoenol pyruvate by the by the phosphate which is required for the phosphorylation is also provided by the phosphoenol pyruvate so now you can see that in the prokaryotic system when the glycolysis is taking place there are two phosphoenol pyruvate which are generated lakshat gamikai sangto in prokaryotic system when the glycolysis is taking place the two one of the phospho uh, pp phosphoenol pyruvate it will proceed for the glycolysis pathway towards pyruvate uh, generation while one of the phosphoenol pyruvate it will undergo a typical okay and that cascade will allow the input of the nutrient from outside to the inside and phosphorylating right so you can see here in the figure the first one which is shown for the uh, glucose molecule so these are the different proteins 
where there is a cascade you can see that phosphorylation cascade is taking that pep is converted to pyruvate so this is getting phosphorylated again it will go and phosphorate another compound this will go and phosphorate the third compound and at the end the phosphate group and the energy which is released through during this process it will take up the glucose through a specific transporter and that glucose will be converted into the glucose 6 phosphate right so such kind of mechanism uh, so here we are not wasting uh, energy ata e baka energy to va in the form of atp that is what you have to take into consideration right so the same way you can see here in bacillus subtilis also you have the pp which is for and eventually it will be uh, you, util, uh, it will that energy which is produced it will be utilized to take up the glucose and convert it into glucose 6 phosphate okay so energy is expended not for the transport process but for to form an intracellular derivative that is the phosphorylated compound now this intracellular derivative so i told you that the moment your glucose is phosphorylated the phosphorylated compound do not have a permission to uh, be transported across the membrane okay so it is impermeable and it is trapped within the cell so this phosphorylation also makes the transport of glucose by the pts pre energetically so it's a two for one day okay manje don kaam ekach ves hota hai with the help of one phosphenol pyruvate so that phosphenol pyruvate is also is it is it is responsible for taking up the nutrient and also for the phosphorylation of that particular nutrient right so this is one of the uh, important transport phenomenon uh, in case of the prokaryotic system maybe this may not be found into a prokaryotic system or it may be present in some of the life forms of the eukaryotic system now uh if you have and from this we come to know that uh, the transport of this uh, material across the membrane overall functioning of the cell so knowing this many of the scientists or many of the groups what they did they went for the okay so they have done modification into this transport system so either they might have introduced some transporter they might have removed some of the transporter whereby they could achieve the over production of the compound in which you are interested now don't get confused with this figures which i have shown he baka aplyala ya sagya goshti detail madhe shikaycha nahi hai aplyala fakt he logic samjhun gyaycha hai ki jar tumhala transportation chi mechanism ki phenomenon vyavasthit kalali that is going to help you for your uh, metabolic engineer okay so one statement which is give, which was given here by uh, irina that understanding the metabolite transport gives an upper hand in strain development for example me ata ek thodke tumhala sangto that if you if you are producing one compound say suppose succinic acid now this succinic acid is produced inside the cell now you want it in higher concentration so you are done many modification you are increase the production of the succinic acid but now this succinic acid which you are producing if it is at a very high concentration it is going to be a toxic compound the cell may die and your system may not work but in that if i do a provision that if i put a transporter the succinic acid could have produced so it is produced into the mitochondria so if i can put a transporter into the mitochondrial membrane okay so that the succinic acid will be transported from mitochondria to the cytoplasm but now if the concentration it increases into the cytoplasm again it will be harmful to the uh, cell so if i put the same transporter into the uh, plasma membrane so what i will have i will get the succinic acid which is produced but this succinic acid it will be secreted outside the cell so you may not have the accumulation of the succinic acid and it may not be toxic to your cell so this is how you you have achieved the metabolic engineering that by doing the modification you are increase the concentration but it is secreted outside so that is one thing which can happen or many times what happens that some of the uh, intermediates of your metabolic pathways 
they may be secreted outside the cell okay maybe there could be run whereby some of the intermediates could be secreted outside the cells or they, they are, you may have some leakage system whereby these intermediate they may leak out so if they are leaking out means they have some transporter so in this case if i can block those particular transporter if i can uh, delete those particular transporter there will be no leakage and my system will work fast and i may get the product in which i am interested so like this there are many attempts which has been done by many research groups so uh, that is why that particular phenomenon where the modifications has been done into the uh, transport system we call it as a transporter engineer right so uh, hey bhai the questions kai which are there that what if we know, knew how metabolites were transported inside and outside the cells jar he tumhala vyavasthit kalala to you can play with that so transporters that import substrates can increase the substrate uptake rates and hence increase the volumetric productivity one of the critical determinants of the production cost right so more the nutrient uptake more will be the production of the compound in which you are interested right so few of the examples don't get confused me pehles tumhala sangtoy aplyala ya goshti detail madhe bagaycha nahiye fakt yatla logic samjun gyaycha ki if you know the information that which transporters are there which molecules are transported to that particular transporters you can play with the system so how they have played so this is an example of uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae now this saccharomyces cerevisiae they have a transporter which is uh, for galactose only so it's a very specific type of an transporter so galactose can only be taken up so what the scientists did they have modified this transporter and they have increased the specificity of this galactose transporter so any other alternative substrate so in this case what they have shown that is xylose so using the galactose transporter you can allow the xylose can be uh, taken up by the cell and if xylose is there inside it can be it will be undergoing a series of reaction and obviously it will undergo the glycolysis and ethanol production can be increased okay means what we have done we have now made our system our yeast okay uh, suitable to grow into an environment where there is an xylose which is present so this is how they have achieved it so they have increased the specificity uh, of your not increased the specificity uh, i can say but the uh, they have increased the uh, what you can say the uptake ability means uptake ability that different substrates can be uptaken by a particular transport now you come to this example this is the e coli now in this e coli system uh there is a leakage which occurs as i told you that some of the intermediate they get leaked out so they may go outside the cell so what they did they added some transporters here so you can see here pot e and uh, gap p so they have added these transporters and through these transporters whatever the intermediates which were leaked out they are again brought inside hello lakshya any the leakage tham bollo nahi कारण की लिकेज कशा मु कारण की तो जो मेम्रेन सोलिबल तो तो मेम्रेन मधन लगे बाहर जाऊ शो सो दे मेड एंड प्रोविजन वेर बाय द लिक इंटरमीडिएट्स कैन अगेन बी टेकन इन साइड द सेल एंड यू कैन गेट युअर प्रोडक्शन इन अ हाइयर अमाउंट यस टू 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 थ्री मोर एक्साम्पल्स आर देर येस नाउ हियर हियर इन दिस केस या i will just read out this point that transporters that export the final product from the cell can improve product formation by reducing feedback inhibition karan ki aplyala maiti ki jar concentration ekhada product cha vadla it will go and block the pathway okay so uh, if it is uh, the final product if it is exported outside the cell we may reduce the feedback inhibition okay and we can shift the overall equilibrium of that pathway towards the product formation and that is what is done into this case okay so uh, fat p1 export the fatty uh, alcohols products reducing the toxicity and improve so uh, this system it has been modified so that you get an higher concentration of the fatty alcohol but it could be a toxic so what they did they have added the transporter that is fat p1 so through this fat p1 the fatty acid of the fatty alcohol can be excreted outside and your system is now safe okay the the same way you can see here in this case that they have tried to improve the uh, concentration of lysine 
but then lysine could be harmful so they added the transporter called as ybje and through this transporter the lysine can be transported outside fine right? so in both the cases now you can imagine that you have reduced the toxicity you have reduced the uh, feedback inhibition mechanism of the biosynthetic pathway producing those particular compounds yeah here also you can see uh, exporting the product into the medium simplifies the downstream processing and reduces the overall production cost yes so if the product in which you are interested if it is intracellular if it is extracellular the cost wise uh, the purification or the isolation process may vary so see if your product is extracellular means you are directly getting it into the medium and it will be very easy for you to isolate and purify the product from the medium but if your product is intracellular so in that case what you will have to do you will have to harvest the cells you will have to kill the cells you will have to damage the cells then it will come into the medium and then you go for the isolation and the purification but if you make a mechanism that the product which is an intracellular product if it can be converted into an extracellular product that will be helping you for your further processes so here in this case again you can see that they have improved the uh, strain for the over production of fatty acid okay and in that case what they did they added some uh, genes for the transporters the like ndt or uh, acre or mdtc so they added this transporters what these transporters will do they will transport these fatty acids outside the cell okay and this is how now you have your system which is intact which will continuously produce your product and you are getting the product directly into the media so this is how the transporter uh, engineering is also been achieved uh when you are thinking of the metabolic engineering fine is it clear up to this point any difficulty yes no, i think uh, i have made it clear whatever i want to say now we are trying to understand the system that is what uh, i had been trying to explain परत एकदा इथं सांगतो कन्फ्युजन करून घेऊ नका तुम्ही म्हणाल सर किती अभ्यास करायचा नॉट नेसेसरी